Hello, Chemistry 30. This is our first lesson in the electrochemistry unit. This is voltaic cells. In this lesson, we will explore electrochemistry, voltaic cells, parts of a voltaic cell, how a voltaic cell works, and scientific notation for a cell. Electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry that deals with chemical change produced by electricity and the opposite, the production of electricity by chemical changes. A voltaic cell is a set of two half reactions creating a spontaneous redox reaction that produces electricity. Looking at the picture below, the purpose of this cell is to transfer electrons from one beaker through an external wire to another beaker. This transfer of electrons produces electricity, which is typically recorded by a voltmeter. We have two half reactions, one in each beaker. We're going to start with the oxidation half reaction, which releases electrons. Through the oxidation half reaction that occurs in this beaker, electrons are released. They will then travel through the external wire and will eventually be gained through the reduction half reaction which occurs in this beaker. Parts of a voltaic cell. Electrodes are the metal rods of the ions in each half reaction solution. We have an electrode here and an electrode right here. The anode is the negative electrode and is the site of oxidation, which is the loss of electrons. The cathode is considered the positive electrode and it is the site of reduction, the gaining of electrons. If we look at the picture below, we can see that electrons are traveling from this electrode through the external wire to this electrode. That makes this electrode the anode because it is losing electrons, it is going through oxidation. And this electrode is then the cathode because it is gaining electrons, it is going through reduction. We consider the anode a negative electrode because there is a buildup of electrons that occurs at this anode. Once we have a large amount of electrons that are on this anode, it becomes very negative. All electrons are negative and will repel other negative forces. Eventually, those electrons will repel the negative force and will travel to the more positive electrode, which is considered the cathode. If you're having trouble remembering what half reaction occurs at each electrode, you can use red cat and an ox. Red cat refers to reduction at the cathode. Anox refers to oxidation at the anode. If we look at the picture below, the ox is going through oxidation. It will lose electrons, which will travel through the external wire to the cat, which is the cathode, which will gain the electrons going through reduction. How a voltaic cell works. All voltaic cells use the same principles, which fall under the lesson R6 in the redox reactions unit. Predict the most likely redox reaction to occur by listing all of the species that are shown in the picture below. Pause the video and attempt this example. If we list all of the species available to react, we have zinc solid, which is at an electrode here, and we also have the solution zinc sulfate which we will list as the ions zinc 2 plus and SO4 2 minus. 
On the other beaker, we have copper solid, and we also have copper sulfate, which we will list as copper 2 plus, and we already have SO42 minus listed. And don't forget, always include water when we have solutions. Now we have to predict the strongest oxidizing agent and strongest reducing agent using the Chemistry 30 data booklet. And by doing that, our strongest oxidizing agent is copper 2 plus, and our strongest reducing agent is zinc solid. We're always going to start with the site of oxidation, the loss of electrons, which will be the strongest reducing agent, which is zinc solid. This electrode is going to break down into zinc 2 plus ions, which will travel into the solution, and it will release two electrons. Those electrons will then travel through the external wire across to the other electrode. The strongest oxidizing agent, copper 2 plus ions, which are in the solution, will then gain those electrons, forming copper solid. Since this is the site of reduction, this will be the cathode. And since this beaker is the site of oxidation, this electrode will be the anode. If we think about the mass gained or lost of each electrode, it is fair to say that at the anode, we are breaking down the solid. So over time, the mass of the anode will decrease. And if we look at the cathode, over time, we are gaining electrons forming new copper solid. So as time moves forward, the mass of the cathode will increase. The porous boundary. This is the salt bridge which connects the two beakers of the half reactions. The purpose of the salt bridge is to keep both electrolyte solutions neutral. We need to keep both electrolyte solutions neutral so they don't affect the transfer of electrons from the anode to the cathode. If this cell is allowed to operate for an extended period of time, we're going to see the buildup of zinc 2 plus ions in this solution. That is because the anode is breaking down into ions and releasing electrons. Over a period of time, this solution will become more positive because there's more cations, more positive ions in the solution. If we consider the other half reaction, over time we are removing copper 2 plus ions from the solution because they're gaining electrons and forming copper solid at the cathode. So over time, we only have SO4 2 minus left in the solution which makes this solution more negative. Remember the purpose of the salt bridge is to neutralize both solutions. In the salt bridge, we can have any soluble ionic salt. In this case, we have potassium fluoride, which in solution is K plus ions and F minus ions. Since this solution is more positive, the negative anions will flow in this direction to neutralize this solution. And since this solution on the right side is becoming more negative, the positive cations will flow in this direction to neutralize this solution. You can typically think of anions will always flow to the anode. Here we have F minus which are anions flowing to the anode, the site of oxidation. And the opposite, cations will always flow to the cathode. Here we have K plus ions, which are cations. They will flow to the cathode, which is the site of reduction. Inert electrodes. When the solid metal of an ion being used is not available, an inert electrode is used as it will not react, but will still provide a place for the half reaction to occur. 
the most common inert electrodes are carbon rods and platinum metal. Notice how carbon and platinum are not found in the Chemistry 30 data booklet. Therefore, they will not participate in a half reaction. Consider the following. The strongest oxidizing agent will always undergo reduction, and the strongest reducing agent will always undergo oxidation. Externally, through the connecting wire, electrons always travel from the anode to the cathode. Internally, via the salt bridge, the cations move towards the cathode and the anions move towards the anode. Many redox reactions occur spontaneously, which changes chemical energy into electrical energy. This is the purpose of a voltaic cell, to produce electricity. Therefore, voltaic cells are always spontaneous. Cell scientific notation. This is a method used to communicate the species reacting in an electrochemical cell. This is an example of scientific notation for a cell. The single line shows a phase boundary between the electrode, which is the solid, and the electrolyte solution, which is in the same beaker. The double line shows the physical boundary between the two half cells. You could also think of it as the salt bridge, although it doesn't show the species that are in the salt bridge. On the other side of the double line, we have our other half reaction, with the solid being the electrode and the aqueous solution being the electrolyte. Using cell notation, we can still figure out which is the anode and which is the cathode. We just have to use the Chemistry 30 data booklet and find the strongest oxidizing agent, which will be the cathode as it is the site of reduction. And we can then find the strongest reducing agent, which will be the anode, the site of oxidation. The chloride anomaly. When chloride ions and water are the only reducing agents present, the redox table shows that water will oxidize at the anode. However, the anomaly is that chloride ions will react preferably and chlorine gas will be produced. If we consider the Chemistry 30 data booklet, in this circumstance, we're looking for the strongest reducing agent. So we start from the bottom of the table. And if we move upwards, we would find that water would be our strongest reducing agent. But the chloride anomaly states that chlorine ions will be stronger than water and will react before, producing Cl2 gas and two electrons. Moving forward, we will calculate cell potential. 